and welcome to the Powerful Personal Brand Podcast, where we help and inspire you to build a great personal brand to increase your visibility and authority. I'm your host, Claire Bond, and I am so excited to have on today's episode, I'm joined by Misha Gobig. Misha is the founder and CEO of Gobig Coaching, which helps high achieving women become confident leaders in a male dominated in a male dominated space to gain the confidence and visibility to take their careers to the next level and beyond. She guides her clients through her five step framework to 10 X their confidence at work, as well as unlearning what holds them back. Most often is self-talk, imposter syndrome, perfectionism, self-sabotage, self-sabotage and people pleasing. Uh, Misha, thank you so much. I think these are such really important things to talk about. And thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Claire. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, I mean, so I guess, I guess like one of the b- biggest things is you deal primarily with women. And I know that I've dealt with imposter syndrome. I, do you find that a lot of times that the clients that you work with, do you find it's hard for them to to kind of talk to you about some of these things that are really holding them back? You know, I mean, because it, sometimes it's really hard to go like, wow, I'm sabotaging myself. I feel that when I get to talk to uh, professional women, they are at the point where they really urgently want to talk to someone. Okay. And want to talk to someone who is not directly involved in their career so Mm -hmm. that it's safer. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes That's sense. Um, what do you feel like is, is are like some of the really big things that you see over and over again with the clients that you work with? What are the biggest things that they're they're kind of dealing with? The biggest thing, as an umbrella term, I see is really uh, lack of confidence going out and get get to the space where they want to go because uh, these women are usually highly accomplished. I hardly ever come across someone where I really say, well, you want another certification or you want another degree. Usually they have enough degrees and maybe too many even um, (laughs) or plenty and experience and everything. Uh, But uh, they are still struggling to to understand that they deserve a spot at the table and they can make themselves heard. Mm -hmm. And they can do selfish things if they want that career go for it. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah, it is it's an interesting thing. I mean, I um I can't remember where I read this, but um it was basically that that men are kind of taught a lot of these things. So they mm-hmm. don't have as many of these issues, but women aren't. Um so I mean, I know that I've struggled with imposter syndrome. I have a blog of my on my um uh on my website that talks about it and it's, it's real. And I know that I've mentioned it to other people and that blog gets a lot of um, people commenting on it and things like that. And it's, it's amazing to find out Mm -hmm. like, wow, I'm not the only one. Yep. And that is something I I kind of miss the in-person events and workshops because uh, that immediately gave people a feeling, Oh, I'm not the only one. Because yeah. there's a group of people who are interested in the topic, so obviously they're uh, in the same boat. And mm-hmm. uh, yes, it's a lot about it's a lot about what we learn when we grow up, and it's mm-hmm. also a lot about how many people around us look how we do or speak how we speak. So mm-hmm. uh, the likelihood of an imposter syndrome coming up or those immense self doubts. Um, mm-hmm. They get higher if you're the only woman or if you're the only person of color, if you're the only person with an accent, if you're the only person who needs accommodation for a disability, all these mm-hmm. factors. Yeah. And women, of course, I didn't really the, thought the about, that, minor- about that. The biggest minority at 51% in that, in that scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, well, so. Some people might think that perfectionism would be a really big asset, but you say that it holds women back. So let's talk about that. Okay. So Why? if you if 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 you're listening to this and you're totally happy as a perfectionist, ignore what I'm saying now. Uh, that's the caveat here. Most okay. of us, and that includes me, I come from Germany originally. It's a very perfectionist culture. Efficiency, efficiency, perfectionism are values you get taught very early on. 
uh, like a first time write thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that leads to, for me personally, uh, it, le- it definitely led to heightened anxiety mm. because perfect. I mean, what is perfect, right? Perfect yeah. is always one step ahead of where, where I am. I mean, mm-hmm. or, or 10 steps ahead, but definitely never yeah. where I am. Who says, oh, I'm perfect today? Nope. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so anxiety was a thing that really came up for me and interfered with my peace of mind in my life. And the other thing is uh, I felt that sometimes too, uh, in writing especially, it kills creativity. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, the, the striving for per- perfectionism. Yeah, it kills creativity yeah. because it doesn't allow you to experiment and play. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know that as well as I do. Some of the best and best, I don't know, pieces you might have written, or those that resonate with most people, are the ones where you lead into an edge, or they were not perfect. Yeah. You're yeah. Like, okay, let's put it out there anyway. So yeah. um, for people who are fine with being perfectionist, that can work. But for most people, it adds a level of stress to their life that they definitely do not need. Mm-hmm. And well, it's interesting because I, I, I resonate with that. And, and sometimes people say that sometimes when, you, when you're building your team, you kind of you sometimes hire people that are somewhat similar to you. Mm-hmm. So I found that some of my, my team and one of the team members um, that she does a lot of the creative stuff and she, I, I'm like, I think you're second guessing yourself. And she's like, Oh my God, every time you talk, it's like, you got into my brain. How do you know this? We literally, she'll do creative stuff and she'll, she'll try to fix it and make it perfect. Mm-hmm. And she'll spend like hours and I go, no, no. So I literally give her a time limit. And, and I was like, it's like that show, like the British baking show. Yeah. The time limit's up and your hands better be off that thing. Yep. And she, and she was like, oh my God, I love that. So, so we have, t- we, we kind of joke. It's like gamification of it, but we have like a time limit. And I go, you, you, you make it worse by mm-hmm. stressing yep. about it being perfect. Your, your first out of the gate is so much better. You just got to stop. Um, right. And, that's what I tell my team members that I can tell when they're, when they've got that perfectionism, what do you do if you what to with your clients, if they've got the perfectionism, what should they work on so they can get over the struggle? So the time limit thing is a big one. I do that. I, I just made it too. up. I'm so glad that you, yeah, you agree with me. I just made it huge. up. I just <laughs> It's huge uh, because uh, you know, usually how long a certain task should take more or less. And mm-hmm. you may give a colleague or an assistant that time and say, hey, that should be like a two, three hour job. And mm-hmm. then you sit there and waste your valuable time because first you're really fast. So you do that in one hour instead of the two or three someone junior might take. But then you start fumbling around with it. And uh, that is one thing I learned. I trained as an editor between college and, and grad school at a at a nonfiction publishing house. Mm-hmm. And one of the first things they taught me is when you've gone over a manuscript three times, you're done. From then on, you are making it worse. <gasps> but it's, there might still I be love that. there might still be a typo for something, but usually not. Yeah. But yeah. Then, rounds, then you can have someone else look at it. Three rounds. Because you're no longer objective. Year. Yeah. And that's really that that's it. I love that. And I love that. Wasting I, I, time. I, I, yeah. No, I know that I've done it. And it, yeah. it, it kind of makes yeah. you so mad once you've done it, right? You're like, I wasted so much time. It was so stupid. It was so small. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, actually, I am completely healed in that respect because uh, first novel I I wrote with a friend together, we, it was published like 10, 15 years ago. And so there were two authors. There was, of course, our editor. There were two extra proofreaders. There was a random house publication, so big team. And the day it came out, and, and of course, we had beta readers, everything. The yeah. day it came out, someone sent me a text message that said, there's a November 31st in your book. Did it kill me? No, but it was just yeah. like, and those things, I mean, that could not have been prevented. Those were five yeah. five experts plus a lot of other people looking at it. It slipped through. Yeah. I I don't know. It, it's, a, it's a hard, I think you, 
you just have to have things that kind of happen and, and it didn't ruin your life. And, and, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I kind of think about like, okay, so say that happens to me, what's going to happen? What's yeah. the worst that could happen? And usually exactly. you're like, well, that's not that bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it kind of gets you over it. Um, you know, yeah, it's, I, I, I'm, well, I am a trained former actress and I would go out there and audition all the time. So there was this, always this constant feedback loop and going out there and doing it over and over and, and, and maybe being good one day and not being another. And I, for me, I think that yep. being in this very harsh environment, really of, 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 of not getting a job or, or, you know, and obviously many people, you, you, you are in the job of auditioning, not really in the job of like working yeah. really. Yeah. So getting that, I think kind of got me over my perfectionism. Yeah, because you can't go and do five auditions in a day if you're stressed about the first one. <laughs> you won't even exactly. get out the door. Exactly, and at a certain yeah. point, your focus. You know, uh, you may you may have done better actually by more objective standards in the first audition than in the second. Yeah. But the person in the first audition didn't like you. Something yep. didn't didn't match, right? Yes. So there yeah. was not the right energy or something. So. Uh, those things, there's too much that's out of our control. Yes. Because perfectionism is always directed to the outside. And there's too yeah. much out of our control. If we say, did I do the best I, I could do at this point? Yes. That's the yeah. success, right? Because yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm better an hour later or maybe I'm better tomorrow or next year or maybe I have a bad day tomorrow. But uh, as long as I do the best I can under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. That has to be my benchmark. Yeah, I love that. So, you know, when it comes to building a, your personal brand, um, there's a lot of confidence that has to go into it. Mm -hmm. And someone that wants to start building their, their personal brand, it can be really intimidating, right? Again, why should I? Why would anyone care? All of these kind of things. Like, how do you help someone overcome that, that kind of fear of, like, literally getting out of that comfort zone? Yeah. Um, I am a big fan first of baby steps. Okay. Personally, uh, I grew up in a household where many people had had official roles so that speaking, speaking, public speaking never scared me. Or I only learned that that was a scary thing uh, when I was too old to be scared about it because I'd done mm -hmm. it often enough. But uh, I was, for instance, super afraid of video. Okay. And I had to look into that a little. It's like, why don't I mind a stage, but video makes me nervous when I have a lot more control over what's happening. And I have mm -hmm. to unravel that a bit and then do mm -hmm. baby steps. Mm -hmm. Speak into the mirror, do videos I wouldn't show anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, do, it, yeah. uh, do videos and show them to friends. Do videos five times over. Do only do videos after a hair appointment. <laughs> uh, you know? That's um, amazing. Yeah, I always, I always do that. I trust me. Like, yeah, when I go, like photo shoots for my website and stuff, it's like, whoa, my hair looks good. Let's do it today. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. do the baby steps. So whatever the thing yeah. is where you feel like this tanks my confidence, see what's the smallest step towards that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to start with if, if video scares you. You don't have to start with a weekly five minute video on, on mm -hmm. YouTube and, and share that, share it through all channels. So just yeah. the little things or stories yeah. that goes away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a good, that's yeah, a good I, playing platform. Right. Because I, I saw away. someone, um, I think it was on LinkedIn mentioned kind of like, do like 30 days of, of like self taping yourself with your phone. Just, just talking. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Sh don't share them, Yeah, but it's just get used to just doing it and you're going to get better by the 30th one. You're like, you're probably like, wow, I actually came up with some pretty good tips. I might want to actually share because I, I learned by watching myself, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I often, when I have to like, um, media train some of our clients, like that's like one of the things that I, that I talk about, you've got to do it, practice it, practice, practice, yeah. send me, um, some of the stuff. I'll give you a critique. They often don't want to do that. Cause again, it's scary. Um, but yeah, I had a, a so I always trained for, um, for acting with like, I always did TV and film. I was not a fan of being on stage. So I did TV and film. And so there was a lot that I would be able to do by self taping mm -hmm. and we would bring those self tapes to the teacher every, every week to critique. So we would be, everyone would be given the same sides yeah. and you would have to come in and do it. And that would be so intimidating because you, sometimes you would see somebody that was better than you. 
Yeah. But a lot of times you can learn from that. And I, that's one of the things that I kind of learned. I, I feel like the, the acting thing got me over my perfectionism so much and the, the being scared of, of literally having the same sides that somebody else did and somebody else knocked it out of the park and you didn't. Um, yeah. it, you can always learn. I, I take that, a, take that as a learning opportunity. So uh, yeah. maybe if you're like freaked out, learn from it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the, yeah. that's the only thing that's part of my five step process too, with the confidence. Uh, step four is learn. Yeah. Because no matter. So first step is assess why, what's happening here. Uh, why, why do I not feel good about doing that? Am I scared, yeah. let's say to do a video or, what is behind that? What What is the message I have behind that? Do I have an idea of people don't want to see anything I'm doing? I'm not important enough to share that message? Or is it something totally different? Is it something ridiculous yeah. like it will stay on the internet forever? Uh, yeah. What is it? So that's one thing. And then... Yeah, talk about the five steps. I definitely want to know that. So, yeah. Okay. Please, so first step is really here. assess. Um, yeah. And uh, look into what's holding you back, what scares you, um, but also look at what is something else you've really aced? Huh? Mm -hmm. um, something where you were super confident. Like sometimes I might have a client who says, I've never been confident. And then it turns out she played uh, competitive tennis in high school. And I'm like, That's that is a stage. <laughs> Yeah, that is a stage. And that is a, a thing. When you were an athlete, you cannot win every game. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, usually, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't yeah, win yeah. every game. So uh, and you were still confident about your ability to play. Otherwise, you wouldn't mm -hmm. have got out there and do it again and again, and especially not after maybe a, a loss. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, that leads us to the second step. Like, how does that type of confidence feel in your body when you Recall that situation. Mm -hmm. um, if it's about, if it's someone who has uh, an athletic backstory, it might be hyped. Uh, mm -hmm. It might be highly energized. My, my mm -hmm. memories, when I have a lot of, my, my confidence memories I use for these things, I usually have high energy moments. For someone else, it might be very grounded. Okay. It depends. It's really, it's really personality type at that point mm -hmm. and we take these memories and learn to to just uh awake that get that feeling as a feeling you can create in your body use okay. that memory as the anchor and to transfer that to a new situation and just evoke the feeling so that you can step out and that step three of course is act mm -hmm. because uh, you can evoke and transfer and whatever if you don't if you don't do the do scary it. thing, it's not helping. Right. Um, so that is at uh, that step. It's really all about what can I prepare without over preparing? What do I need mm -hmm. to prepare for myself? Where's my control? Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Where do I have agency? And then do the thing. Like if it's making videos for an entrepreneur, uh, making an offer, or if in corporate, if it's asking for a raise or promotion, you have to do the scary thing and then step four, learn. Mm -hmm. uh, either it went really well, um, but even then you want to look uh, look into that or it did not go quite that well. And then you really want to say, hey, what what did go well? Let's say your first masterclass. What mm -hmm. did go well? There were 10 people. Your brain tells you, oh, but you wanted 150. Mm. But 10 people were there. That went well. And mm -hmm. the one person booked a call, call afterwards or whatever. Those things. Mm -hmm. Really, what went well, what didn't, and what would you do differently? Mm. And step five, super important, celebrate. Because that's how we strengthen the neural pathways uh, to teach our brain that wants us to stay safe and back, right? That's how we teach our brain it's safe. Look, mm. I even get an afternoon off for doing. I yeah. did my master class in the morning. Look, and now I'm going to the spa or I'm taking the afternoon off. Look, yeah. that's a good I thing. I like that. Yeah. So celebrate is the step women tend to leave out, and that's that's really super important. 
Yeah. Well, what interesting thing. Um, so I, what I often tell my clients about the part when they're like scared or they only have like 10 people show up or one person showed up or something. And I go, that's really good because you're getting better. You're get and no one was there watching you. So yay. It'd really be awful mm -hmm. if it was your first time at bat and like a million people were watching. <laughs> that is scary. So exactly. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. You know, you're scaling. I I read something recently too uh, about uh, YouTube channels that have millions of followers and there was a list of how many followers they had after a hundred videos. That's not, uh -huh. that's not nothing, right? A hundred videos. Yeah. Uh, and those were all channels over 10 million followers. Some of them had like 75 followers after a hundred videos. And but others think had like 200. they were mm -hmm. after, after, yeah, yeah all so, of those videos. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's something to think about. <laughs> and that'll yeah. help you with the perfectionism too. Because it's not that scary when right. you know it's not being watched by millions of people. Yeah. yeah. That is I love absolutely love that. Um so when you um so we talked about some of the challenges that um that women face in their in their careers. Do you only work with women? Is that when, is that like your do you ever work with men? I rarely but sometimes work with men. Um, okay. Just it's it's mostly at that point, uh, not not your straight white dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's still it's still somebody that's maybe dealing with that that imposter syndrome that you were with talking similar about. issues for for different yeah. reasons. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they come to you for that because you can fix those fix that those things. Yeah. Um, I can. It, I can teach ahead, people. I can teach people how to tap into that confidence and how to how to do these things. And it's usually the steps are the steps I can explain to you in five minutes. Right. But mm -hmm. it's about, it's about uh, getting people to override their uh, f uh, fight or flight or freeze response when they actually need it. So that mm -hmm. is, that is the training that goes into it. Yeah. And, and uh, it takes a while. Yeah. So, so I mean, you're, you're dealing with some pretty big Things. And you mentioned that there, there's things that people may have, be, you know, have been dealing with really their entire life. So how do you really get somebody to unlearn these things? How long does it take? Okay, I, ca I cannot, I cannot give you a, a standard answer for that. Yeah. I usually work with people uh, for half a year. And some okay. people I work longer with just because something else and it's a good fit. Mm -hmm. And it's just very mm -hmm. supportive going forward. I always have a coach um, yeah. or two. Yeah. Um, but uh, what I uh, what I see is sometimes people. You just have, sometimes it's really enough to ask the right questions. Like, how does that serve you anymore? Mm -hmm. uh, not at all. Or uh, where does that come from? Why do you think it's selfish to do what you want to do? And then a story mm -hmm. comes up and you're like, see, that was, that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. At that point, staying in the, staying in, in behind the scenes made sense. It was safer, but mm -hmm. now you don't have to do that anymore. So, um, so everyone's different, essentially, mm -hmm. how long it kind of takes them to get to that aha moment and but, really make a change. Uh, but you can really, uh, you can really make huge progress in a couple of months when mm -hmm. you, because there's so many methods out there, how you can, for instance, uh, taper down on the negative self-talk and mm -hmm. they all work, but it's just like, what works for you, what works best for you? Yeah. I and I like, I like to make things like you said before, a little playful, a little like mm -hmm. a bit of like a game. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to do that too, because then it, but it's more fun. It's easier. You're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, since this is the the Powerful Personal Brand podcast, I would rem be remiss not to ask how your personal brand has really affected your business. And and um, so what have you done with your personal brand? How have you seen it impact your business? I have switched to a relatively bold uh, brand identity a while back. Um, so one of my sig my signature colors are basically burgundy and tomato red, and I combine those two, mm -hmm. um, and black and white then with it. And now I get to hear lots like, "Oh yeah, I see your stuff." 
and I totally recognize it. And so the awareness, the awareness is there. And then the interesting thing is that people say, oh, yeah, that fits you so well. So it's really hmm. um, what, I've, what I've seen since I, since I went with this very bold choice. And I had, you know, I had a designer tell me, oh, no, red is a healthcare color. And I'm like, no, 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 I've always worn red. Red mm-hmm. has always been my color. Mm-hmm. Um, she was so that's right. Your, that's course. your I mean, signature. Like, but that's that's my color, thing, right? So, yeah. um, and in the beginning, I was very timid about uh, branding boldly, okay? Because probably I didn't know exactly where this was going, and having something that kind of every coach has, like the nice beige and neutrals. Mm-hmm. seemed like a safe choice and it was mm-hmm. pretty but it's not me yeah and now uh now i have a branding that fits a lot better with my personality mm-hmm. and people respond to that a lot better so That's it awesome. really goes hand in hand yeah well i love that and this has been such a really fun conversation so if someone wants to connect with you where can someone find you I would, as my my website is a mess right now, but okay. uh, I would love for people to connect through Instagram or LinkedIn. Those are my mm-hmm. two platforms. Instagram is go underscore big underscore coaching, go big mm-hmm. coaching. And uh, LinkedIn is my name, Mika Golbig, as you see it here. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, so I thank you so much. I said, I said Misha, but you said Mika. So I'll call you Mika. (laughs) So sorry for that. So anyway, Mika, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you guys for listening, watching. um, And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.